good evening, Poe fans. We are back with Poe Discussions. Hey, Jeannie, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Carmen? I'm doing well. Just ready for our storms in Tennessee to move out of here. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I am too. Especially yes. when they try to bring tornadoes with them. Like, keep them. Yes, you they're not very. They're they're not very poetic right now for the month of April. Well, you know they are for those people that are long-winded. Just That's so. true. That's true. Just but so. speaking of poetry, we have a very special guest tonight, and she yep. is a poet herself, and that is mm-hmm. Trisha Shufel. And Trisha, if you would <laughs> like to introduce yourself, we want to hear more about you. And so take it away. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Trisha Lee Schufeld. I'm an artist, uh, poet, author. I always say jack of all trades, master of none. I always have my hands in a million things. <laughs> um, always thinking. Yes. Um, but uh, lately, uh, mostly poetry. Uh, I still, you know, I'm still doing my art and everything, but mostly writing and writing poetry right now and uh, just focusing on that. And of course, you know, have a great love of Poe. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. Yes. (laughs) True. And you just released a new book. Yes. Actually, I released a a few new books. Yes. And Um, I I have these two. I was going to say this is the Unearthing Nevermore golden mm-hmm. shovel mm-hmm. and the passion for poetry and so Fair if enough. you trisha if you want to talk about like all of the ones like your newest books sure um, let everybody know. There. well let's see um i kind of i kind of released the both books at the same time but um they're mm-hmm. they're vastly different obviously um, the Unearthing Nevermore book, uh, which is, I have hard copy and paperback on that. Mm-hmm. It's not in Kindle, but, um, I, you know, do have the actual, um, physical copies. Okay. Um, so Unearthing Nevermore is basically what it is, is it's golden shovel poetry mm-hmm. inspired mm-hmm. by Edgar Allan Poe. Now, if people don't know what golden shovel poetry is, it's a, a contemporary poetic form that was created um, by Terence Hayes. Um, and what it is, is it's uh, it pays tribute to a particular poet that you might like. Okay. Um, what he did was he wrote a, a poem called Golden Shovel Poem, I mm-hmm. believe. I believe that's what it was called. Um, and it paid tribute to Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, who wrote a poem called We Real Cool. So basically what you do is you take a line or a verse from a particular poem. So, for instance, um, quote the Raven Nevermore. Okay. And you use each word from that line as your end word for the line you write. So the first okay. line is quoth, second line is uh, the and the third line is Raven, and so forth and so on. Okay. Until you form a, a poem, and then when you're done, you go back and you read that end line, and it will reveal the um, the golden shovel line. That's so, cool. yeah, it is, and it's something I think that uh, Edgar Allan Poe probably would have loved. Um, yeah, I, you know, I agree. Back in the day, totally. like I just. Because he always liked kind of puzzles and cryptic things. Mm-hmm. And I think he would have loved to create a poem where, you know, um, something's revealed at the end. Uh, yeah. So it's instead of like, a, I, well, I guess it's acrostic poetry. Yeah, at the beginning, word, yes. Mm-hmm. But, it's, but it's like a particular, like one word. This yes. is a, an entire verse. Yeah. I, I think he would have totally loved that because it mm-hmm. would have added that level of kind of mystery, right. it, especially not letting anybody know if he was doing that. So that right. yeah, that would have been really cool. Right. Yes. Um, so it's filled with, it's, uh, it's got 30 poems in it. Um, and the, uh, I was, I was looking at it today. It's kind of funny. I haven't actually read over the the poems in the book 
since I released it. So I okay. figured I'd go back and get familiar with the poems again. So I reread uh, the entire book. And um, there's like, I believe that I reference about 22 of his either poems, stories. Um, there's a couple letters I reference. Mm -hmm. um, some of them uh, I repeat, like I use a couple phrases from the Raven. Um, and there's, uh, so a couple of them are, um, I borrowed from a few times, but they're okay. different phrases. They're Absolutely. different lines. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. and then, so, and, and it's also, it's filled with my artwork. So there's yes. illustrations. It's beautiful. Throughout. Yes. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, and those illustrations actually uh, came from the Poe Tarot, which was the first uh, mm -hmm. Edgar Allan Poe themed project I ever did. Right. Um, yes. And Red Feather said, sure, go for it. I Because I, I contacted them and I said, you know, I want to use some of my art for this unearthing Nevermore. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, go for it. So oh, that's great. That's great. You know, Yes. And I think, didn't you win a Saturday Visitor Award for the Potero? Uh, well, I was nominated uh, on the okay. Potero. I did not win that year. Okay. okay. Um, but uh, the, the, um, the Ghosts of Nevermore actually did win last year. That's um, right. Okay. A Saturday yep. Visitor Award. I wasn't able to attend the ceremony, but um, I did, you know, did get the award, which was really yes. nice. Yay. So, yes. yeah, it was great. Because yeah. nice. that, that is a lovely book. Thank you poetry. so much. Yes. It and is. that's Speaking. another one that's sort of, it, it's inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's stories and poems and, and everything. So, and filled with artwork as well. So. Yes. Cool. Well, I was wanting to talk about the Golden Shovel for just a second. Sure. Because you're using... Uh, excerpts from Poe's poetry and mm -hmm. short stories and everything as language how difficult or easy was it for you to kind of match your writing and stuff to fit with his you know his wording and his word you know cues and all those kinds of things because I know for a fact that some of the some of the stuff that we read nowadays, especially being a teacher in the teacher classroom, is extremely difficult to get kids to understand or acknowledge mm -hmm. the language because it's so, I hate to use the word, but it is old language. It's kind of like if we were reading back to Beowulf or Gilgamesh or all those. Mm -hmm. So how difficult was it for you to kind of integrate you with Poe in the language to make it flow? Okay, I'm rhyming. I got to stop that. All right. Go. No, that's a good thing. <laughs> Sorry. Did not mean to do that. Go ahead. Um, it, it's That's actually a really great question. It's funny. I, I've, a few times with my editor, she's, she's pointed out to me, you know, that's a, that's a archaic word or like an old word that nobody knows what that means. <laughs> and I'm like, we'll put it in anyway. <laughs> because <laughs> I like I like old words like I will yeah, I will look up yeah I I have books full of like weird obscure words or if I'm reading poetry I'll underline a word that I go what I don't I don't know what this means what does that mean and I'll look it up yes, um, yes. and then I, I I log it down because I'm like I'm going to use this in something mm -hmm. um but it's interesting because when I write Poe, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's like when I really start getting into it, maybe because I've read so much um, yeah. of his poetry, his stories, um, it just seems to come pretty easily. I, I've always liked, like I said, I've always liked um, words that are obscure or language that is older. Like I love Shakespeare and I love, um, mm -hmm. you know, just Elizabeth Barrett Browning and, you know, W.B. Yeats. And, and I love stuff like that, uh, period piece films. And mm -hmm. uh, so that I think it almost comes a little more natural to kind of weave it in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I find that I do it I, I, almost like without thinking. 
if that makes sense. Yeah, um, it does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I'll have to, sometimes I have to go back and I'll say, well, is this the correct word? Am I using it properly? Because mm -hmm. maybe it was used differently back then. Yeah. Okay. That's when it's great to have an editor that will double check what you're doing. <laughs> um, Definitely. Uh, but um, that's kind of how it all flows when I, when I'm, you know, writing something like that it just seems to happen. Yeah. I don't, it, you know, it, it sounds, it sounds like it's kind of, it's part of your style. Just, yeah. To, yeah. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. It, yeah it's definitely part of my style. I mean, not just for uh, when I'm doing poetry that's inspired by Edgar Allan Poe, but even when I'm doing other types of poems, like I wrote a poem that was, um, it was an alphabet poem um for, in my books under the silence and it was inspired by christina rossetti's goblin market mm -hmm. and i use a word um the line is some keeks the pale limbs with greed and keeks is a word that nobody uses anymore it's yeah. and it, no. it means to like spy and i thought mm -hmm. what a great word this is it's so kind of sinister keeks yeah and, <laughs> something so I, I will do that in other works as well. And mm -hmm. I kind of like doing that because I, I, it's not that I'm trying to be pretentious and say, Ooh, yeah. I'm going to use a big word here. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just that, again, I love old words. I love language. And so I like to incorporate some of that in what I do. And then if somebody looks at it, if somebody learns from something from that, I think that's great. You know, yeah. I always say that we should use old fuddy duddy words like, you know, whippersnapper. And <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, I and miss I, words I, like that. They're great. <laughs> well, I was really yeah. proud of some of my students the other day, one of their little, um, what we call bell work at the beginning of the lesson, they come in and it's on the board. They have to, answer it. Usually it's um, grammar, vocabulary, things like that. But it was a line from a short story and it, the word was sauntering. And so they had to figure out what, a, what the synonym, no, what, what it meant. Then they had to explain with a synonym. And most of them put stroll, the ones that knew what it meant. But there mm -hmm. was a few of them that put lollygag. And I was like, I was very proud because I was like, you're using colloquial language. Yeah. This is so awesome. <laughs> yes. 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 I would always, I, I would, I, I would I torture my mean. kids with less, less Yes. Lassadaisical. I had a couple yeah, of I always tell them, I'm like, stop being <laughs> lassadaisical. And they'll be like, what? Yeah. If you don't know what it means, look it up. And if you still don't understand it, that's your problem, not mine. Just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> But those old languages, the connotations behind them, the usage of it, and trying to explain to the kids what slang truly is, it's like, dude, slang is just shortened language. That's all it is. Yeah. It's what I said, basically, it's you guys texting. Because, you know, you're right. shortening actual language to get across your point. But like with your book and the golden shovel and everything, I love how it integrates and brings into not only a cross from back in the day, so to speak, to today with that type of language. Because even if someone doesn't understand it, it may spurn them to want to know what it is and mm -hmm. want to learn yes. about it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I've found with Poe's poetry is there's a lot of words that even people that are very well educated and knows a lot they still want to understand and revisit so yes. i think that's one of the things that your poetry does is that it helps people revisit language to yeah. understand it because to be a poet you have to use your own emotions but at the same time you have to understand how to use your words to get those emotions across yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and uh, so congratulations on the visitors oh, award that was you. great yes that. yes and, uh, that's exciting yeah so it's so anything... go ahead i'm sorry go ahead i was just going to ask you to have anything in the works for the future right now that you're working on well, I'm not, I'm not working on anything Poe related, uh, the, surprisingly. 
Um, <laughs> I am working on uh, another poetry book. Uh, it's tentatively titled Untitled Rebellions. Oh, nice. Because the one thing I, I find kind of funny when you're when you're writing a poem, you know, everybody says you, you have to come up with a title. And I'm like, well, Emily Dickinson didn't. Um, <laughs> you know, she, I believe she never, I'm not, I shouldn't say she never did, but I don't believe she titled her poems. Mm -hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody out there, but uh, she used the first line of her poems as sort of her title or that's yeah. the way they were listed anyway mm -hmm. uh, and I always have trouble when I'm when I create a poem because it's not usually the title that starts first you know it's not like I mm -hmm. have a title and then um, I create the poem around the title that's very rare I maybe a, a few times I've done that but um, usually I have, it's more like a theme or an idea of what I want to write mm -hmm. um, but then after I write it, I go back through, no, what am I going to call this? What am I going to call this? Yeah. And, you know, when I was creating Unearthing Nevermore, that was a thing of like, okay, what do I call these? What, yeah. what do I call each poem? And I think I start with uh, Nevermore and I end with Forevermore. Is that correct? I, I have to look. Say. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. yeah. So the the new book i'm working on is um it's i'm purposely hoping that i don't type that's why it's tentatively titled untitled rebellions mm -hmm. yes because <laughs> i kind of want to keep it that way but mm -hmm. um but we'll see you know once you get down to the wire it, and then suddenly you come up with something it's like oh but this would be a great you know yeah thing and then who knows but I, that probably won't release until maybe fall, because uh, okay. I'm really, I'm really taking my time with it. I'm really um, kind of, well, there's been a lot of things going on, too. So it's like I write yeah. when I can, you know, mm -hmm. it's not as almost like the other projects where I was like intensely focused on them. And so I was able to get them done a little bit quicker. Uh, but uh, so it might be a while for before that one comes out. But um, this unearthing nevermore, um, it, it, it's funny because it it evolved from writer's block. Oh wow! Uh, okay. I had intense writer's block at one point, and I was so stressed, and I was like, "That's it! I'm done! I can't! I'm dried up! I can't write anything yeah. else!" Um, and I had a few um, workshop books um, and I want to get the name correct here. Uh, uh, look over here. <laughs> Diane Lockwood. Okay. Diane Lockwood. She has um, these great mm -hmm. workshop books that basically they're prompts and um, descriptions and everything like that. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to pull out one of these books and I'm going to go through it and just see if it sparks something in me. Cause when I typically, when I get writer's block, um, I'll just go do something else, you know, like I'll paint mm -hmm. or I'll sculpt or I'll watch a movie or I'll read other people's poetry and see mm -hmm. if something ignites me. And this was like one of those things where nothing worked, nothing. Oh, wow. And <laughs> yeah, so I pulled out one of her books and one of the um, prompts was this golden shovel poetry and I'd never heard of it and I went oh this is kind of neat yeah all right so I think one of the first poems I wrote which I included in unearthing nevermore but it was actually first appeared in Sunder the silence okay. was um based on Poe's um poem alone okay and that was one of the first yeah golden shovel poems i i wrote and it's a long one it's actually usually because most golden shovel poems are fairly short it's a line you know and this yeah. is like two pages you know oh wow <laughs> yeah it's so um it's one of his longer um i don't know if i have it 
quickly that I can reference it. But um, Find it. it's one of the longer golden shovel lines. And so I, I did that. And it was interesting because the words came fairly easily. It's, it's funny when you're writing a golden shovel poem, because you have that word at the end and you know you have to end with that word, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be a little difficult. I, I can and, only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And there have been times where I've written an entire golden shovel poem and I've gone, oh, shoot, I forgot that word. Oh, like, because I'll get on a roll <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll delete it somehow. I'll delete yeah. the, the end word and it. Yeah. it and then I'll go back and I'll read it and I'll go, that's not right. <laughs> that's oh, no. Not what the line it, is. It, it almost to me is like a math problem where yes. you, you're fitting everything in, which is, is kind of cool to me because I, I have a little bit of that kind of side of my brain that um, I, I, it speaks to me sometimes. That sounds really fun, that aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. It, it is fun. It can be a little unnerving when you when you think you've created something really great and then you've got to go back and adjust it because you forgot one of the you erased Words. one of the lines by mistake yeah um oh, yeah. so that happens but um and then i also found what it did was well not only did it spark me uh to create and i was like okay i love poe how about an entire book Mm -hmm. uh, can I do it? That was, I was challenging yeah. myself. It was like, oh, okay, yeah. let's see if I can really do this because, and, and have the poems each be different because mm -hmm. I didn't want them all to, you know, be the same. Obviously I didn't mm -hmm. want it to totally reference the stories. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit here and there but I wanted it to be my voice as well as, mm -hmm. you know, what, um, what I was thinking or feeling, because there's a lot of poems in there that are about um, anxiety and uh, sort of like going down the rabbit hole of your thoughts yeah. of, of, you know, one of the poems I wrote was about, I, I don't remember which one exactly, but it was about, um, <laughs> this is kind of morbid, but it's, it, it, it's this thing of, you know, we go through our lives and we pass our death date every mm -hmm. year, but we don't know what that date is. We don't yeah. know the day we're going to actually pass. Okay. Right. Right. But we, but we live that day, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. is there something within us that somehow senses that's the day? <laughs> Yeah. You know, so I, I wrote a poem around that, you know, yeah. of, of my thoughts on that, because it just hit me one day. It was like, oh, that's kind of a a weird, you know, thing in the back of my mind. And yeah. because I've, I think I've I'm a person who had to face, um, you know, I, I was, I'm a breast cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very, very aggressive form of breast cancer. Um, so death was something that was very present with me. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of like Poe, in that sense, Poe was kind of surrounded with that his entire Absolutely. life. Mm -hmm. um, I always, when that happened to me, it was like, I almost said it was like death as a companion um, yeah. and that I had to come to terms with it. I mm -hmm. had to uh, look it in the eye, face it, um, face, uh, you know, how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are th themes of that in the, in the book. Um, mm -hmm. And I talk about, uh, as a matter of fact, there's a, a poem um, where I, use a line from the red death uh mask of the red death mm -hmm. um and it's about it's a very personal um kind of ex the experience i had yeah of when i was going through treatment going through cancer treatment um so there's a lot definitely a lot of me in there as yes. well 
Yes. Yeah. And, and it, it's, I, I really enjoyed reading the poems and um, it's something that I'll go back to, you know, like, Oh, I remember this. So I'm going to come back and reread mm -hmm. it. Cause I like mm -hmm. to do that with poetry. Um, Cause it just, I don't know, sometimes you just need something to kind of quanti quantify, qualify your feelings or just, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. it's like poems do that for me. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, I have poets that um, I'll read something and then it'll, it'll resonate a certain way mm -hmm. at a certain time in my life. And then I'll go back and I'll, I'll reread it again. And it's like, I'll suddenly go, Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, that hits me completely different yeah. um, in, in a different way. So mm -hmm. um, definitely. And I've always felt like that with Poe's work. It's yeah. like when I think about when I first read Poe when I was really, really little. And then when well, I say little, like, oh, it's short. <laughs> I was younger. <laughs> when I was younger. Um, and then, you know, as a teenager and then yeah. as I got older and then when I really kind of revisited Poe when I was working on the Poe Tarot um, and I had to really dive, dive deep into it. And yeah. um, that just reawakened sort of my passion for his yeah. work. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah. Well, and Poe is a definite uh, master when it comes to mortality in mm -hmm. his yeah. work. He yeah. comes across and he brings it, he brings you with you, with him through his work. Mm -hmm. uh, and so every time, like with the golden shovel, I was like, oh, Poe's a silent partner because mm -hmm. he is yeah. putting himself in there with you. And mortality is something that we, like you said, we all face and it stems uh, a lot from tragedies that's going on in our own lives I mean mm -hmm. it happens and poetry is a great outlet for a lot of us with artwork with poems Absolutely. with just talking with just talking about the art the works of art mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. so it it brings about differing like with Poe like we've always said Poe always brings something different to the table for each one of us but yet yeah. He, we're his groupies because yeah. we are <laughs> we are we are his followers we're his you know we're trying to say okay Poe where are you going to take me today right yeah. because you mm -hmm. know like you said is like when we we're younger and we we're first introduced we're like oh this is cool then as we get into teenage years things change hormones get in and then we'll read it again and we're like whoa that's not right right, right. yeah and then now in the time of life that we are it's like oh I get it. Yeah. I really yeah. Get. Yeah. It, it's, um, I love what you said about Poe being a silent partner. Um, mm -hmm. Because I've definitely felt like that when I'm, not only when I'm writing mm -hmm. uh, something that's Poe inspired, but when I'm reading it. You know, it's mm -hmm. almost like he's right there over your shoulder. Yeah. Going, yes, you get that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, oh. there's there's something about that, you know. Uh, yeah. And I and I also think, you know, like um, as I'm writing something, you know, what would Poe say here? What would he? Yes. How would he word it? How would he come across? And, um, you know, so. Yeah, I love that silent partner. That's really cool. Yeah. That's the way I've always felt with Poe and others like him that have inspired me in my own life. Mm -hmm. Is it's like it's that, you know, when you're younger and you have that imaginary friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's somebody that you can truly share everything about you with, that you don't have to worry about any kind of judgment. You don't have to worry about them going off and spilling everything and you getting <laughs> you know, that, but yeah, Poe's like that for me. He's my silent partner. He's the, mm -hmm. he's the guy that I talk to, that I tell my troubles to, that kind of gives me my inspiration because he's like, oh, I did that. You need mm -hmm. to go read this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to go you know, talk about this and you'll see. And so, yeah, I, I think that's what makes a lot of us that are Poe, Poe populars or Poe popular uh, <laughs> fandom 
uh, is because we do have Poe as our silent partner. We've mm-hmm. grown up with yeah. him. We still we still feel him and still understand him to a certain mm-hmm. degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I I agree, and he shows up in some of the most weird places that you know it's Poe you never uh, you know imagine. And like I can be watching something and I'm like. Ooh, ooh, that's like a hint, like an allusion to a uh, cask of Amontillado or something like mm-hmm, that. It's like, mm-hmm. like, was that purposeful or was it just, a, you know, something that's coincidental? So it's all, I always, you know, wonder those things. Mm-hmm. But Trisha, you mentioned like when you were younger and reading Poe. So how did you can first connect with Poe? Like what was your first experiences mm-hmm. with how Poe came into your life? The first memory I have was sitting in a circle in elementary school. Okay. And I don't remember what grade exactly, but Mm -hmm. we were reading the Raven. Mm -hmm. Um, The teacher was having us do line for line in the circle. Oh, fun. Okay. And of course, Robin. Yeah, and, and I don't Raven. know. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I truly understood what I was reading at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but that would probably be my first memory of 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 connecting with Poe. Okay. And then I think as I was a teenager i think i read some of his love poems love Mm -hmm. like annabelle lee Mm -hmm. um you know that kind of thing and you know being a teenager and the first types of poetry that i ever wrote were like very moon and june and you know stars and unrequited love and things that i knew nothing about because i didn't have a boy i didn't have a real boyfriend until i was like 19 and a half so yeah. <laughs> I had you know, in my yeah. head a romanticized version of what love was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I would read Poe and I would go, oh, God, that's just oh, Annabelle Lee mm-hmm. and you know, the way he felt about her. And, you know, it that I remember that. Um, and then I got into the darker poems as I got older, probably because I was, I don't know, maybe I was angry about something or, yeah. you know, but um, I remember getting older. The, right. That yeah. Makes, that makes me angry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the mask of the red death making a big impact on me. Um, okay. I think I, I might have been in high school at the time and, and read it in like a, um, a literature class or, or an English class, um, mm-hmm. writing class or something like that. And I remember reading Mask of the Red Death and just being in absolute awe of the story, um, how poignant it was, um, mm-hmm. creepy. <laughs> Yeah, it really you know, the, is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just the use of like the colors and the rooms and mm-hmm. um, what each kind of symbolized and meant. And then I later went on to write um, when I did The Ghosts of Nevermore, I did a, a short story called Memento Mori. Mm-hmm. And I based it on The Mask of the Red Death because that was one story that always really stuck with me. Yeah. And um, I just, that, um, Murders in the Rue Morgue and The Black Cat, um, all all those stories, I ended up doing short stories of my own based on those because they were yeah. they were they were big impact stories for me from Poe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know for me, like Mask of the Red Death, I think I appreciated it even more once I taught it, like to yeah. my students. And it it was probably one of my favorite ones to teach. Because right. you could get so many levels out of it, connect it back to, you know, history. And the kids always really just love that story. And I would imagine that story became even more poignant for, 
I, I mean, I don't know if you, you taught it recently even, but with COVID mm -hmm. and everything, yeah. um, it, I really started thinking about the mask of the red death when COVID. Hit. I, I did too. Uh, kind of when we, it was the stay at home time frame, mm -hmm. and I was like, we're almost living the mask of the red death. And at yeah. that point in my career, I was uh, in administration. And so I wasn't teaching. Mm -hmm. And since then, I'm pretty sure our curriculum changed since then. And uh, it's not actually taught here in Tennessee. Now it's probably taught other places. Mm -hmm. You can still like um, add it into as a supplementary text, but mm -hmm. it's not one that's required. And so a lot of people only get time to do what's required, right. which is unfortunate, but um, yeah, it's a great one to teach. Yeah. 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 I was teaching history during the whole COVID thing so yeah. i was i could use that as a historical prop mm -hmm. because i would always bring in about how red the mask of the red death was written and during the times that they were just coming out of the bubonic plague mm -hmm. they were still recovering and then the mask of the red death he made it so poignant about the deaths and and each person who had to experience something different Mm -hmm. and so it was it was used i didn't read it or anything but i did make make mention of it with the historical properties and then mm -hmm. connect it with the spanish flu and then all the other epidemics that we've gone through up until the pandemic this time mm -hmm. about you know how it was like exactly a hundred years since the spanish flu and all that so i used to use because i wasn't teaching literature at the time i went from too many things to count but she's taught all like, subjects yes I know. <laughs> all the big, the big so four, at the, time, the, big at the time i was in science i was teaching science and history so uh -huh. it kind of like went together and so yeah but i didn't i miss that's one thing i do miss is teaching all the nuances of poe and his work and oh, yeah how it Absolutely. ties to real life right yeah yeah I, I do remember during COVID reading an article that someone had put out. Um, I don't remember who the author was, but um, kind of like uh, Poe, you know, predicted, you know, a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was, it was not the time travel aspect, but kind of like think about some of the things that Poe's written and it's mm -hmm. very, you know, truth is stranger than fiction, you know, right. with COVID happening and that link back mm -hmm. to his story. So mm -hmm. I thought that it was a very fascinating article. Yeah, absolutely. It was. So have absolutely. you done any other tarot drawings or tarot boxes or just that one? Uh, well, I have the, I have the Poe Tarot and I have um, a deck. It's very vastly different, but uh, it just came out not too long ago. Oops. I'm going to knock down everything on my shelf. Oh, no. That's ah. usual. I, do um, I have it here. The Everglow. Oh, oh that's cool. beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. it's. There we go. The Everglow. Yeah. Um, it's very, very different than the Potero. Um, when I finished up the Potero, which is a black and white deck, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do something in color. Um it's it's actually its own system. Uh, it's based on the Rider Waite Smith traditional tarot, mm -hmm. but it incorporates elements of oracle. Um, there's astrology, numerology, uh, and animal sy symbolism, kind of all woven together into one um, thing. Uh, but it can be used in in a lot of different ways. So. Uh, that's the second deck. I, I don't have any plans right now for another deck. Well, I shouldn't say I don't. Um, I do have like one I've been working on, <laughs> but <laughs> it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back because of the poetry and stuff. It's like my, yeah. my drive has been towards the poetry mm -hmm. and I've got another deck that I've been working on for years. It's a circus deck. It's actually circus themed. Oh, interesting. Um, and it's black, white, and red, which would be perfect with the Potero. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, it's probably a little over half done. 
And if I really spent time on it, I could probably finish it and get it done. But I keep getting yeah. distracted. It's like, oh, look, a chicken. And I'm going that <laughs> And, you know, oh. plus I, it's like I, I got bitten by the poetry bug. And I've just yeah. been on that bandwagon. And um, you had mentioned the other, um, you know, the books I'd come out with. And I actually, um, I did another thing that was... Um, uh, kind of like a a, a journal. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. it's it's called Passion for Poetry, um, a poetry review journal for poets and poetry lovers. Mm -hmm. And there's actually two versions of this. This is okay. the first version, and then there's an expanded version okay. of it. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you the difference between the two. But essentially, what it was is um. If you like to, like most writers um, and poets and stuff, we have these little notebooks. We have notebooks everywhere. Yes. Um, where we're jotting down notes in our phone or on it, little paper napkins and pieces of paper. Here's, here's one of mine and it has all kinds of stuff. Yes. <laughs> so you have everything in like various different places. And then you've got to go back and like, okay, what journal was that in? Was it in my phone? Was it in my notebook? But we'll keep mm -hmm. like lists of words that we like or yes. um, phrases that we like. Um, but nothing is ever in one place. And so I actually, I went online looking for something. I was okay. like, you know, because there's, there's, um, there's journals out there for say, uh, if you like to read certain books and you want to review those books okay so I'm like, but there's nothing for poets there's there's nothing absolutely nothing out there like a, wow. a, a poetry there's poetry prop books i mean you can buy books mm -hmm. on with prompts in it on you know sparking you to write and stuff like yeah. that but there's no real journal so i was like well what what would i want <laughs> you know what would i want to create or what would i want to mm -hmm. find so the first one, basically what it is, is it's, it's templates um, that are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have the poem, the author, um, the style or type of poem it is, the year it was published, the book title, and then you can add keywords or phrases that you liked mm -hmm. um, and your overall impressions of that poem, like what stood out to you. And then there's a little area that says spark the poet and that's for like, maybe there's something about that poem that um, has sparked the first few lines of a poem for you that you mm -hmm. want to create. Yeah. So that was kind of, I th think, yeah, that's mostly what that one is about. And then it's got a glossary of terms in the back mm -hmm. of, um, you know, poetic fo forms and styles and, not everything is in there because there's so much. Oh, oh, there there is. But I thought this was a very good range of for someone that doesn't know a lot that wants to learn. Right. Absolutely. Because yes. there when I started researching, I was like, there was so much. And I thought, well, a lot of these are very advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if people, everybody would. You know, like you can write an entire book about certain poetic forms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like how to write, you know, um, different, different, like, a, a, I think it's like a Sestina. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's going to, somebody's going to jump on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it's called. Oh. Um, but, you know, okay. How to write a sonnet. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You there there you could write an entire book on how to write a sonnet. You yes, absolutely. And examples and in this type of a love sonnet and a, this sonnet and or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to get too in depth with it, but I wanted to give enough that somebody could go, okay, that that makes sense. Um, I'll go from there. You know, if I need yeah. to research more, but. The um the second book, which is an expanded edition, um, has that template in it, but it's got two other templates, um, like a different different kinds of templates. Mm -hmm. It's got 
a section with um, 10, po 10 poetry prompts. So mm -hmm. one is like write an alphabet poem and then it has an example of like one of my alphabet poems. And then mm -hmm. next to it is a, a space, a space where you can actually write an alphabet poem. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so there's, you know, write a golden shovel poem, write a repurposed haiku, um, an acrostic, um, a, um, using sound, you know, like using mm -hmm. sound in a poem. Okay. Uh, that kind of thing. And then it has the glossary of terms in the back. Okay. So that, that one's about, um, it's like a hundred and almost like 170 pages okay for the ex expanded, expanded one and then, okay and then the original one is you know like 115 pages or so okay so okay. um but it's neat because you could you know if you have a favorite poet like poe yes you could use the entire book of yes. just analyzing his work and of, that's that's what i plan to do with mine yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you yeah. could take I was the mask excited. The red yeah. Death, yeah, and then say these are the key words I really liked, or these are the phrases I really liked, and mm -hmm. um, this is what I I thought he meant by, yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, so you could dedicate an entire journal just to your favorite po poet, or you could take various different poems. You could take a Plath poem, or, and a Poe poem, and a and sexton poem and you yeah. know really whatever you want and mm -hmm. mash them all in there but the nice thing about it is it's all in one place yes <laughs> so you remember right. where you put it so yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah that's that's the other thing because um Je Jeannie and i it's so funny uh talking about having you know tons of different journal books and that kind of thing so when we or i ordered us and genie's genie's got one but it has our names on it with one of our logos and then the potastic two oh, cool. and i somehow or another misplaced mine my husband ended up putting it on top of the refrigerator <laughs> one day when i was sure, like she put this somewhere you. yeah, yeah he, he did he did he admitted it and so I ordered a whole new one and I had mm -hmm. barely even started that one. So now both of them have a ton of stuff in them. Right. Right. But I'm always like, where did I put them? And I, cause it, uh -huh. one's usually on my desk, one's sometimes on my end table and then sometimes it's on the coffee table. You never know where it's going to end yeah. up being. So I have papers and, and then I, I have stuff on computer, like, Oh, you yeah. know, various different, that's how a lot of times I'll, I'll start writing is yeah. I will jot down words or phrases that appeal to me. Yes. Uh, that I read and then I will go, okay, there's a poem in there somewhere. Yes. Uh, and then just start formulating it. Um, that's usually enough to spark me and get me going. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show how really old I am, but. Let's see if I can get it in the picture. I don't yeah. know if I can. I think it's I know a, what she's going to show because I was like, I cannot believe you still have these. The <laughs> three, the three and a half floppy disks. <laughs> I came across <laughs> some the other day. Uh, I was going through a bunch of stuff to shred, to take to a yeah. shredder. And I yeah. found those like in a box and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, and all all of those that I have, I mind you, have nothing but writing on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I used to build websites and everything to hold a lot of stuff, and this was way back when you you didn't have these nice little things, you just had to click and make a website. You had to code it, you know. And so I have all my codings and everything on those. And I'm thinking, I don't even know if I can find a little thing to stick those. And it'd be readable in today's technology, mm -hmm. but I just can't seem to want to get rid of it. I right. can't because all that, all that, I, all those ideas, I guess, is what bothers me. But the one good thing about having our cell phones is we have the electronic copies if we mm -hmm. can't trust, you know, trace down the paper copies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as we have written them in the electronic copies. Yeah, right. that's true. Right. Oh. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I that use, was really good. I use Google Keep, which you can make little notes to yourself, color code mm -hmm. them, add a collaborator, 
do mm-hmm. check boxes, all these kind of things. And so I will periodically, like while I'm driving, think of an idea for a poem or a short story. And I'm like, oh, if I don't put this down now, I'm going to forget it. And so mm-hmm. at a stoplight, I'll put it in there real quick or when I get to school. Right. And it, it just, it, I have so many ideas in there and some of them are deal with like murder mysteries and things like that. And so I told my husband, I'm like, if anybody ever found my phone and <laughs> got in this, sh- this is a dementia oh, yeah. person. <laughs> I think about that sometimes, like, you know, if they ever went and looked at my bookmarks or my mm-hmm. history on yeah. my computer of like things I've looked up. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, because, you know, like <laughs> yeah. when you're writing Poe, you're writing some dark stuff. Yes, yes. So, you know, and you're go, researching okay, a- How do you do, you know, how do you poison blah, blah, blah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, What's you know, the perfect oh, poison to use or, you know. Oh, yeah, she's God. a writer. It's okay. Um, oh, my goodness. But it's but- funny that you said that about um, jotting stuff down because I can't tell you how many times I wake up in the middle of the night with an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'll hear. I often will hear words when I. I'm. I. I swear I write when I sleep. You probably um, do. You probably. Yeah, do. I really believe I do because I'll wake up. I do most of my writing in the morning. Okay. And uh, I will wake up in the middle of the night, and I'll hear a phrase or a line or two or something, and I'll go, mm-hmm. "Wow, that's really good." I got to write that down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I fall back to sleep. Oh gosh. And, and I think it's okay. I, and all my brain will do this too. That's okay. You'll remember in the morning. I know it's gone. It's, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, keep the notebook beside the bed, keep the, the phone so you can, but yeah. I have tried that where I've tried, I've tried to put it in my notes in uh-huh. the middle of the night. And I'll wake up the next morning and I'll read it and it makes no sense <laughs> because I'm, first of all, my glasses aren't on half the time. Right. And yeah. um, the words are garbled. It's like, there might be one word I recognize, but the rest of it is all typos. Yeah. So or it'll auto correct. Or, yeah. 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 I have to decipher what it, what it was I was thinking. <laughs> so it, it does get comical at times when I'm I trying bet. to figure that out. But. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And, uh, you know, talking about kind of like some of what, you know, kind of what we were talking about, like with the writing process and how you mm-hmm. do things, it, it, it would be very interesting to know, did Poe use the same writing process throughout all of his poetry and his right. short stories Or, you know, did it, was it kind of like those ideas that just pop in his head and he wrote it down or Mm -hmm. it'd be very interesting if we could know that. Right. Because it's not like you had, I I mean, I don't know for that time, maybe, you know, like, would there have been little notebooks to write? Because, Uh, I mean, was he using quills and stuff? I don't. That's very true. Um, like you, would you be out and about if he were out and about somewhere? Would he actually have access to a pen, paper and a, a paper. and a pencil or 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 something? Like I don't know what was invented for that time frame. Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't know because. It, I would think it would have been more like a quill type pen. Jeannie may know. Um, I know she had to take a break real quick. Um, well, I have seen in movies, like, um, I think I saw something recently. It was like a period piece movie. I want to say it's Bridgerton in the series Bridgerton. Okay. And, okay. But I could be wrong. But the, the, um, the guy took out the gentleman took out um, a little tiny notebook out of his jacket. Uh huh. And he had a tiny little pencil, <laughs> and oh he gosh. jotted something down, and he put it back in. And I was like, "Oh, that's kind of neat." Um, but did yeah, they that, have that? Is that ac- historically accurate? I don't I'm know. I'm kind of curious. I'm actually gonna while we're talking, Google this because I'm kind of mm-hmm. curious now. Yeah, I mean, because the thing is, you think about it, 
like we have access to everything now. You know, we have our oh, phones. More our than we can even imagine. Yeah. yeah. But for somebody like Poe, if he was out, he had to remember uh, what it was and then go home and then create it all. But I have no doubt yeah. he would have been able to do that because to me, he's just so brilliant. I, um, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I wonder, you know, the way that... Uh, for myself, the way that I create, and uh, like I said, uh, I'll put down phrases or words on a piece of paper, and then it sparks me. I often wonder with poets, um, did they do that? Is yeah. that how they created as well? Did Poe sit that sit down and start writing and go, okay, um, here's a list of colors, and then he's like, death, play. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then it all kind of, he puts it together like a puzzle. I actually could see him kind of putting it together like a puzzle, but. I, I could too. Yeah. Jeannie, did you mm -hmm. hear what we were saying? Did, would Poe in the early 1800s, you know, have ac quick access if like he thought of something and needed to write it down so he didn't forget? Would he have I had a little book, like a notebook he would have to have because he was also a literary critic true that's so true. he would he yeah. would go out and he would uh, probably excuse me for a second <laughs> <laughs> that's that ah. you need to go on a diet move okay, sorry. <laughs> we were trying to figure out if he would be if he would yes. carry like a small little notebook with a yeah, a pencil I see or, that. Or would he would that even be have been a, a thing back then it was because a lot of people especially the merchants when they would do their business they would have these little books with them mm -hmm. that they would make notes of what they were selling and bills of sales and those yeah. kinds of things so because remember back then men usually kept big big wallets you know the big type of wallets that would slide into the inside of their coats mm -hmm. to keep their money because you know paper money was huge back then yeah when it actually started coming into play most of the time they would have their little change purses in their yeah. pockets uh, so yeah i would see poe being able to be that person to carry around like something a little bit of a notebook and mm -hmm. it wouldn't be what we would see today it wouldn't be like a little you know, just a little something that was made out of the white parchment paper. Yeah. It would be more apt to be a type of parchment paper. Mm -hmm. Some papyrus yeah. of some sort that was a little durable, but they could carry it around. And yeah, because I would see when Poe would go and interview people, maybe for literary works, he would have something with him to write something down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't use... I mean, you, some people might have carried around a quill pen and some ink wells, but yeah. most of them, they would just have these shards of wood that would be burnt at the end and use that as a writing utensil. Okay. Yeah. So it, it would be, it would definitely be something that Poe would have on hand. Yeah. Because like Trisha was saying that he was probably brilliant enough that he could remember things. I agree. But at the same time, also, on some of the studies, like Lord Byron and Percy Shelley, Shelley. and all those, mm -hmm. they would they would get together and have like these writing circles. Yeah, you know that's that's how Frankenstein came into existence. Yeah, because it was kind because, of a contest in a way. Yeah, it was a contest. Yeah. They were sitting yeah. together and they were challenging each other to write the perfect horror, you know, horror story, basically, mm -hmm. or monster story yeah mm -hmm. and mary shelley was like all right i want in on this so you know so i i could see that it what probably wasn't as prominent but for those that had money and had the means yes i can see them carrying around the the small little notes and pencils and stuff yeah right right yeah so it would be why are you giving me attitude <laughs> Attitude. Attitude. Yeah. I'm surprised right mine here. isn't doing 
up to no good. She's actually being yeah. pretty good. She's down on the ground. Yeah. There, well, right? I, my, mm. met my tuxedo cat earlier. I noticed that his tail was behind me at one point because yeah. he was sitting over on the arm of my mm -hmm. chair. But yeah, you kind of look like you were sprouting something in the back of your head. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> so she's turning into a monster. Okay, Miss Blair, knock it off. Oh. Anyway. Well, um, well, Trisha, we always ask, what is your favorite po poem or story or one of each? We always like to know that. Uh, you know, it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really does. I understand. <laughs> but like yeah. I said, I, I think what stuck with me, um, Mask of the Red Death definitely mm -hmm. is probably my all-time favorite story okay um i love recently i've really really fallen in love with city in the sea yeah that's a uh, great one yeah i just really really fallen in love with it again um it just something about it uh maybe because from watching uh follow the house of usher recently on netflix mm -hmm. uh i just love the way that I can't remember her character's name. It's escaping me. Uh, uh, but she, how she delivers some Madeline. of the lines from City in the Sea. The way oh, City she, in the Sea, sir. The way uh, she says it, it just, oh, it just gives it, me cold chills. Was it Verna? Verna. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, the way she delivers some of the lines just absolutely give me cold chills. Yes. Just, just Absolutely. Ugh. I agree. Yes. <laughs> I love when she says, uh, but lo, you know, a mm -hmm. stir is in the air. There's just, yes. ugh. I, yeah, I know. It gives me chills now it. thinking about it. I know. It's, there's something about it. But uh, yeah, the, probably those two. Annabelle Lee for a long, long time yeah. has always been a favorite. But yeah. 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 I want to know in City in the Sea, um, we talked about this on the poetry reading day because Virginia read that one. Aloud. Yeah. And then I did the, 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 um, the video for you for that. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, not City in the Sea, but it was my interpretation of, you know, the, it yes. was called the sleep, but it was yes, based on. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. And um, it, it's one of those of Poe's poems it's so good, but it doesn't get as much credit as some of no. the more known. Like the Raven. That, yeah, the ones that are taught in school. And mm -hmm. it's like, it, it's just a shame. Some of his, like that one, are not more out there for people to really engage with. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, everybody immediately uh gravitates toward the raven because it's so known yeah um mm -hmm. and it's it's beautiful i mean i absolutely love the raven um oh yeah absolutely there's just it, it's it's so musical and there's so many um you know you really get the visuals in it um in the in the words themselves but uh like you said there, there's other poems that there's just you know, it would be nice in a way if, if people uh, mm -hmm. knew more about them. And yeah. City in the Sea is definitely one of them. Oh, I love your kitty cat there. Yeah, I know. I feel like she's a part of the the uh, podcast <laughs> tonight. <laughs> she's, she's made herself. She's enthralled by your oh. your renditions and ideas there, Tricia. She's just yes. staring at you because she looks you like she's tell. looking down. <laughs> That's so cute. At least she's well, not you know staring at me anymore. You know what's yeah. funny? Um, when I say when I watched your um, your uh, God your video uh, with mm -hmm. all the poets on it and oh, everybody yeah. reading, yeah. and I had to laugh because when my videos came up, the one video for the Raven and the Rook, yeah. I don't know what happened. This is the weirdest thing that has ever occurred. The audio was correct. Okay. Yeah. The video was actually from a completely different poem. And I don't Tell know how the two got spliced like that and then sent to you because I, I'm like, 
they're two totally it was weird it was like some ghost was messing with oh the, that's weird it was supposed to be a completely different video it was, it was actually an image of a of a ra like a raven okay. and i'm going what in the heck is this this oh, goes wow. with it went with a completely different poem that had nothing to do with poe yeah and i was mm -hmm. like this is weird why is this like this and because i even looked at those videos before i sent them to you and i went i don't know why they have that that is the weirdest thing i've ever seen that is bizarre yeah, yeah your, your just like, poems were fantastic and the i'm just glad the nice. audio was right <laughs> yeah yeah oh absolutely yeah no it was great yeah technology we, we, you gotta look yeah, oh, I know. My kitty. yeah. My kitty. I, yes we see her back there no this way this way yes, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think they're trying to tell us something apparently. So it's I like yes, yeah. Let's and I've got without. I've got two boy cats and they're probably outside with my husband. So <laughs> probably. You want to come she, up and say hello? Do you want to come and say hello today? Yeah, I feel like probably. Janie Freebird no. uh was a, a host mm -hmm. tonight. <laughs> yes, she was. She was. Yeah. She got oh. tired. Now, Here's Trisha, Bella. remind us what her name is Aww. again. This is Bella. Bella, that's right. Bella. Yes. She's she is actually, beautiful. She's a tortie, just like what yeah. Poe po had. Katarina, a, yes. Yeah. So she's a tortie cat, and she's just a love bug. Oh, that's she's so an awesome. awesome. <laughs> Except for when she's sitting in the face with her tail. Exactly. No, that's normal. Yeah, she's beautiful. <laughs> she is I, a I can't heart. face a day. Yeah, I can't face a day without getting slapped in the face with a tail. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it's right. Weird. That's, why they, that's why they let you know that they love you. That, yes. Yeah, that's one way. <laughs> yeah, and then, the, uh, then all the scars that pop up on you because they've attacked you because you did something wrong or something. <laughs> Oh, I know. They're worse um, than toddlers. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, the, the poetry reading, we had such a good time with it. And mm -hmm. we're definitely going to do it again next year because oh, it, it was, just, yeah, we, we had a great day and mm -hmm. I, we're, we're ha so happy we decided to not just have people on live. That way we had more opportunities for people to be with us in spirit. Mm -hmm you know if they couldn't mm -hmm. yeah i so wanted to to be there but i had a bunch of stuff going on that day so it was understandable I, you know, um yeah it was nice to be a part of it though yes absolutely yeah, yeah. And we were so happy you were <laughs> and trisha and you're is gonna one be, of our judges yeah she's one of our judges for the poetry contest for the second mm -hmm. year in a row Yay. and yep. um Yay. so you know those of you out there watching and listening definitely get your poem together and submit it. Mm -hmm. The link is on our six degrees of poe.com and go to the tab of poet like poe poetry contest. 2024. Yes. <laughs> so, awesome. Trisha, it has been a mm -hmm. pleasure talking to you. This has been amazing. Oh, it, it has. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for having me again. I yeah, really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we look, we forward, look forward to seeing you. Yeah. Yes. Seeing you and seeing new works come out. And, mm -hmm. um, and I'll also, I'll share with you, like once I start this summer working with this, um, I'm excited about it. Oh yeah, so absolutely. Let me, let me know how it works out for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, oh. I guess Jeannie, we are, we are, Oh. oh. Alright, you always lag. It's like, what the world? <laughs> <laughs>